Today I'm going to be going through some things that you didn't know about in Enshrouded. These are going to be some of my top tips, some of the less obvious things that you might not already know about in the game. If you do find a video useful, don't forget to drop me a like and a subscribe down below and let's jump into it. The first thing here, you want to be looking at the top left of my screen and you can see I have the on the road buff. If we actually go ahead and open up the character menu here and look at the status details, in the buff section here this says on the road, roads provide comfortable travel and reduce stamina needed for sprinting. Now this is a really really useful tip combined with a tip that I'm going to share with you later in this video where you can make your own roads so do hold out for that one but that is going to mean that when you are running along it's going to take up less stamina and therefore meaning you can run for longer. Now on the topic of running if you're not on a road or you want to just get around the world with the most momentum and the least stamina usage if you actually run and jump as you can see there that is barely taking any sometimes not at all in terms of stamina. What this is, is basically a movement technique in the game where if you hit the jump at the right time, obviously without pulling out the glider there, you can go along the floor with very minimal stamina usage, if any at all. And what this will do is allow you to keep full sprinting momentum and then still have stamina left for a fight or wherever else you need to do, whether it be gliding or running after that point. Next, we're going to talk about chests. Something a lot of players don't know is that you can actually press Shift and R to deposit stacks. So let's say, for example, if I take out this bug dust and put it into my inventory, you can see here in the chest, I already have two stacks of bug dust. So if I press Shift and R, that will automatically sort the items that are already in this chest from my inventory into the chest. This also works in reverse. If I take out the same stack of bug dust and press Shift and F, this will refill the stacks that I have. So you can see that one was 46, it's now 50. If we take out this 46 stack and do it again, Shift and F, it brings out those materials there. This is particularly useful for things like bandages, explosive bombs, any ammo that you might need, and any food that you are using. Now there comes a point in Enshrouded where you can build your own well. You simply place this one down and you can scoop water up from it. This is a massive, massive benefit because a lot of you will have found out you will need to do some farming and one of the essential things for farming in this game is having water. Now something that isn't immediately obvious is that you might need a few of these wells in order to be able to get a lot of water. Now there is also a feature in the game at the moment, maybe a bug, I'm not entirely sure, where if you replace the well down, you can simply pick up some more water from it. If this is a bug, obviously I don't encourage it, but if you do want to get your hands on some water, placing several of these down is going to be the best way to do it, because it does recharge over time. Now while we're on the topic of water and plants in general, obviously you want to get these plants going, and one thing you might find in the game is farm soil or even fertilised farm soil when you get later on into the game. Now these increase the growth rate of crops that you plant in them, so if you are one wanting to get you know the crops to grow faster these ones out here then you plant them in fertilized or regular farm soil and that will grow much faster than in dirt and of course as you can see here from some of the recipes you will need for example strawberries require farm soil if we have a look in this one here when you get onto saffron this requires fertilized farm soil now if you do find some of this or you manage to make one piece of it this is going to be a crucial crucial tip for you so what you are going to want to do is go into your construction hammer interface and open up the bottom level here which says terrain you're going to want to switch over to this box for meters and as you can see we've got farm soil selected now if we go ahead and place this just above ground level it will place one here and let's say we only had one that's only taken one farm soil for this placement now if we go ahead and stand directly on top of this and hold left click with the rake you will see that it will start to add farm soil everywhere else around it now this is a great way to get yourself extra materials because then you can either mine this up or indeed continue to spread it out in which case you can use it for planting crops in but let's say for example you only had one and you wanted to get some for the flower beds like we saw earlier what you can do is spread it like so go ahead pick up the pickaxe and actually mine into this and as you can see there it is giving us some farm soil now one of the extra things you can do with the rake is of course hold it in your hand here and as you can see on the side if you press r and use the scroll wheel you can make this at an angle so what we can actually do here is get the farm soil and we can make this go up into kind of a a steep mountainous type thing which is much easier to mine into and then we can go ahead and get those blocks back very easily this does of course work with fertilized farm soil when you get your hands on that one as well so this is a great and fast way to get yourself some better crop grown materials and of course be able to make the plants now another thing that this works for is the roads in the game so if you get your hand on one piece of dirt road block like i have here you can go ahead and let's say place it down let's say somewhere here 
Now, if we go ahead and go back to the rake, and again, we go on to top of this, you want to make sure that it's at the correct angle. So whichever angle you actually want for the rake, make sure it's at correct. Put the rake on top of it, hold left click and move this around. And as you can see, you can then go ahead and make a dirt path or a dirt road, which is going to give you the buff whilst you are on top of it from, again, one piece of this initially so you can spread this out very very nicely with the rake which is a really really good feature of the game and makes building and optimizing your farms and the roads around your base and that sort of stuff much much easier now one thing to note with the rake is if you do try and flatten it from the bottom as you can see it won't spread it out you do need to make sure that you get the circular blue radiuses you can see on top on top of the material that you want to spread and then move around with it i often find standing on top of it is much easier but whichever way works for you as long as you've selected the correct material it's going to spread spread that material out for you which is super super useful. Now another thing that you might not know about Enshrouded is that you can actually go to your flame altar and you can reset your skill points. Now it does always say that it costs 10 runes, has been costing me about 70 or 80 runes upwards of that but it doesn't show the correct amount however it still isn't a ridiculous amount considering how much loot you get that you can salvage down. Now this means that you can revamp your build depending on what playstyle you want. Now obviously if you're going to be out and about gathering, you're going to want to pick up things like the Miner perk, the Lumberjack perk, the Quality Gear perk and the Mason perk as they're really going to help. You also might want to pick up some points in Endurance because as you can see there, they increase your stamina by 10% per attribute point. But another thing that I have found really, really useful is actually specking down here into the Wizard tree and going for this one right here, Radiant Aura. This is all fell foes within 10 meters that take one fire damage per Per intelligence per second and of course you can then increase this with the sun aura perk which is all fell foes within 10 meters take one additional fire damage per intelligence per second paired with things like all fire damage is increased by 20 percent 10 percent etc and then actually having the intelligence points on as well as the gear set for this you can actually make this very very good now one particular reason i have specced into that for certain activities such as mining is because when you head over here to the mining rift as a lot of you will know the further down you go you become enshrouded and you have a lot of those flying beetle mob type things that come after you having this perk on knocks them out of the sky and kills them before they can actually hit you if you have got a at least a few bits of intelligence i've only got about 10 to 15 points and it's making it much much easier so for certain things like that it will be worth respecking for you so you can have a peaceful time mining the tin or in the mining rift however if you are just going to be gathering in general i would probably recommend going more into the endurance points here so that you can actually get more stamina Another thing you might not have known about the skill tree is if you actually have a look at the Beastmaster point here, you can have something called Calm Spirit. This is where wild animals within 50 meters will be pacified unless attacked. It does not affect animals corrupted by the Shroud. Which seems interesting, first of all, it means things like the boars and the wolves are not going to attack you, but paired with its upgrade version here, the Beastmaster, which is when you are targeted by an attack, wild animals within 50 meters will attack the enemy. Now this in and of itself is a great, great perk, but what it doesn't tell you here is you can actually get a guardian pet that helps out with you while you're out and about. Now this isn't a pet that's going to stay in your base and chill with you, it is just a temporary pet for while you are exploring, but let me show you guys how this works. Now as you will see here as we approach this wolf is not going to attack us what we can do is go up to him and press e which means start guarding this guy is now going to help us if things attack us now these guards will follow you around a little bit but it is sometimes a little bit slow the pathing is not great right now obviously this game is still in early access so it's something they can work to improve on in the future but if you kind of wait up for them a little bit they will start to follow you around and if you don't get too far away, they'll continue to follow you. But of course, wolves will still go after rabbits and such as they see them in the area because that is what they do normally. So you don't take full control of the guard. It is just going to help you out and follow you around in combat. Now, if we go over to this guy right here and we hit him with, let's say, the pickaxe. This is to get the wolf to attack him here. Then hopefully the wolf should come and help us attack right now. And as you can see, he is doing some work there, which is great. He's going to be able to kill this guy for us, which is going to be super helpful. And you can see in the top left there that we did get the XP for it. So this is a really cool feature and it can be very, very useful, especially in the later zones where you can get some more powerful creatures to help you. And the enemies are a lot harder to kill, especially if you're playing solo or just with one or two friends.
And one final thing here that you might not yet have experienced in the game, depending how far on into the game you actually are, is these magic chests. You want to make these as soon as possible because any resource or material that you place in them can be used from anywhere inside the flame altar's radius in order to be able to let you craft with it. So if I go over to the crafting bench or one of the NPCs over there and I want to craft one of these things, fired bricks, you can see I can create the fired bricks block there. But if I go into my inventory, I don't have it on me. So it allows you to use resources anywhere in the radius of the flame altar to be able to craft whatever you would like which is very very useful that is going to be it for today's video hopefully you have found it useful and informative and if you did get something new out of this video that you didn't know make sure you drop me a like and a subscribe down below because there is going to be plenty more enshrouded content coming your way if you think there's anything really cool about the game that i haven't included here or you would like me to do a part two with some more secrets and things that you might not have known about enshrouded let me know in the comments down below other than that i'll catch you guys again very very shortly on a brand new upload take care and peace.